All right, YouTube, I wanted to give a, another shot before I start ripping things down. Gonna rip off the siding, take out the windows, and start with the tip. All right, just wanted to show you how bad this is. So this stuff is just peeling off, but look how damp and wet this is underneath. Now it's just glued to foam. Then you have some steel beam here. So, I just think that's the old, I don't know. So it's just coming off piece by piece. We're getting there. All right, YouTube, I wanted to show you the seam where there's a like a skirting and the top of this. The seam totally rots out because water gets behind it. Look at all this wood. Look at the floor. Wood just falls right out. So if you have a amper that's not garage kept or kept under a carport, this is probably what it looks like underneath uh, for your knowledge. If you don't keep these in a carport or a garage, they just leak and uh, the nature of the beast. So I'm just going to show you that real quick. All right, so here's the Z bar flashing I'm putting up. I'm gonna start here and it's gonna go down there. I'm just gonna screw them with uh, self-tapping. So here we are just measuring this distance six foot one inch. I got my handy dandy tape measure and this drywall square. Make sure I get a nice clean line. Just take a box cutter, just cut that line. 61 inch and start taping it onto the side. And uh, you're saying, oh, stapling to the side and to the foam, that's not good enough. You need to nail it to the studs. I am nailing it to the studs inside the frames and some of the wood studs that were still good in there. But when I screw the metal to the wall, I'm going into the aluminum studs. And that is going, you see the aluminum studs there on the edges. And there's an aluminum stud where I mark the X's. That's an aluminum stud. And in the bottom where I screwed the galvanized Z-bar flashing, that's a stud. So it's gonna shore up the whole wall in theory. Now let's see how it goes 90 miles down, 90 miles down the highway. That's a different story, but we won't drive on RV that fast, right? All right, let's keep going. All right, YouTube. So this part is kind of cheating because I've got this um, polyacrylic, polyacryl uh, flashing seal for 11 bucks on clearance. Usually it's more than 30 bucks. Um, they just had a crazy clearance going on and I got lucky, but I'm putting this stuff underneath the flashing. You see I'm on the roof right now. All right, so what we got, we drew this line I'm going to show you what tool I was using to cut this tin. And it is regular old circular saw. I had this for like 10 years, still running good. And I bought from Harbor Freight this Hercules two times longer life cutoff wheel for cutting metal, steel or stainless. So as you can see, it cuts it real nice. And I'm doing 100 inch lengths, 100, 100 inches for that. And uh, real quick, before I forget, I did a little bit of trim. I did a Z-bar at the bottom, this corner aluminum for the edges. And I'm not going to do that edge yet because I'm going to cut the metal to fit and then I'm going to cap it. And I have that cap. That's a drip edge. And then around the door, I did put some flashing to make it look a little bit more uniform. And uh, I'm going to stop here, do all this side first, and I'll move on to that side. All right, let's keep going. All right, so got it laid out, but I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. My idea. So I got a. I'm gonna trim that with the my angle grinder, and I'm gonna just go all the way around this side, and then add the flashing on top. But that's what it is so far. We're getting there. Come handy little helper, cutting up some tar paper finish covering the wall. Now I went and switched to these button casts because 
the part that won't rip off, staples won't go through that. So I gotta use the button caps. But let's keep going. And there it is with the siding done. So I'm gonna paint that door black and that whole cat's probably gonna go black. But for now, the siding is up. And uh, this took me about two days. So, and that's just one side. I'm gonna paint the back of the RV black as well and do the edge. Probably gonna bring that in cut that metal at an angle to match the back bumper but it can be done and I imagine if you had done this with already painted tin or aluminum it would look a whole lot better but this is the Mad Max look cheap DIY all right YouTube so what we have here is uh, this side has so many access panels that I did not want to put the sheet metal all the way down See, I had to cut these holes just to fit these things and the gas can, whatever. But what I'm doing is I'm putting press treated wood at the bottom and I'm going to salvage the few doors to have access to these compartments. Generator, which I may or may not use. Uh, water pump, that's just storage. Storage. Sewer, storage. So as you can see, um, I have screwed, uh, this is a one by four pressure treated, but I've screwed it to the frames of these doors. And these doors are tough. So um, this bottom rail, actually I forgot to put a screw in here for this bottom rail, but uh, it's just gonna hold doors. And these are just the cheap, or the fiberglass aluminum frame doors. So. It doesn't need a, you don't need a stand on it. So it's just to hold the doors. So I've screwed, these screws that I used are absolutely amazing. I bought two kinds and these are the only ones that worked through this thick steel. That, I'm sure you could see the thickness of that steel. Uh, I can't even say a gauge because I have no idea. I sound like an idiot. But these are Teeks, Tex, the original, however you want to pronounce that. Self-drilling wood to metal screws. And it just took a Phillips head number three. And that's what I've done. And for these that I need a little bit wider, I just side nailed with the air gun. Um, this is about an inch and a quarter. Just attached there and screwed it in. But it ain't gonna be perfect, but we'll, I'll show you it when it's done. We're gonna move on. All right, YouTube. Well, what we're gonna do now that we got the siding up is this door needs to be black. This tan, 90s, and pinstriping, it just has to go. We're not removing this pinstriping. We're just gonna leave it on there and whatever paint goes on top of it. If it's, it's gonna be raised, so maybe I'll add more black pinstriping over top of it, give it a 3D effect. But I cleaned the window with acetone. I threw brake cleaner on there to get the heavy grime off. And then acetone. What we're gonna do is Rust-Oleum oil base. Now I got a full gallon because remember I'm gonna do the back of the RV as well as the cat, the driver, the front end. Um, that's gonna be all black. So a little formula I use is seven ounces of, now we're rolling it, seven ounces of oil based paint and then two ounces of mineral spirits, this stuff here. So. That's what we're gonna do, and uh, let's get to it. All right, so there's the door. It's uh, painted, and it's still wet, but it's tacky. Well, tacky. But um, that's that combination I showed you was uh, eight ounces of oil and then two ounces of mineral spirits. I think that's what I said, no, six. Seven. seven ounces of oil base and then two of mineral spirits. I did pour into the cup and then I had to pour some mineral spirits out because I poured it too much. But, um, and another trick I didn't mention was just adding a little bit of boiled linseed oil. Now, if you ever heard of Floetrol, that's a, it helps reduce brush marks. So boiled linseed oil is basically half of Floetrol. It's, uh, if you look at the, um, 
the ingredients, but it's supposed to help level out the brush strokes. Now it's not gonna be like super flat. And this surface is not super flat as it is. This surface is fiberglass. You can even see the fiberglass is uh, stuff in it. So half of the texture might be the surface underneath and half might just be the orange peel. But that's that, the door is done. And I actually had paint left over, so I started on the hood. I just threw one coat down on the hood. Um, I probably want to do like three or four coats on the hood. But uh, yeah, I just threw the extra. I did tape up the forward sign, so we'll be able to get that all squared away. And for the next coat, might do a little bit of sanding, might not. I really don't care about the absolute smoothness. And I might even try a spraying technique where you use three parts, a three to one ratio of rust oleum and mineral spirits, but that'll be in another video. But anyways, I'll try to take a gander of a far shot of this side finally being done. Well, with the door done, and I do gotta do some trim at the bottom, but this is a basic idea. But stay tuned as I paint the cab and the rear, and uh, then we'll move on to renovating the inside. Thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit 2,000 subscribers by 2022, but we will see. Until the next one.